Hey guys, welcome back to your Oracle SQL tutorial series. This is Caleb from Caleb the Video Maker 2, and in this video we are going to continue our discussion of foreign keys, constraints, and what they are supposed to protect us against. So the first thing constraints are supposed to protect us against is incorrect or invalid insert statements. So for example, in this users table, we have a unique constraint. So that means if you try to put a username in there that already exists, you're going to get an error. So let's just show how this works. So I already have both of these tables in existence, and we're going to run an insert statement. If this is your first time learning about inserts, congratulations. But it's really simple. All you got to do is say insert into, and then say the table. So let's say projects. And then all you do is say values, and then in parentheses, you pass in the values separated by commas. So we just have to make sure we match the data types. Numbers are always just plain, no quotes or anything like that. So we could just say 24, 23, whatever. Then a comma, and then inside of quotes, the project name. And then finally, we need to say the creator. And that's going to be the creator's username because that's what the creator column references. So that means we need to pass in the username inside of quotes. So in here, I'll just say created by Caleb Curry. And then we'll highlight this entire thing and run it. And you can see we get an error. You see it says integrity constraint violated, parent key not found. And what that is saying is that we tried to make a project and assign it a creator, but that creator does not exist. These constraints work really well at protecting us from invalid inserts, but the other thing they need to protect us from is invalid deletes. Now, how does that work? Well, by default, you're just going to get an error if you try to delete something that violates a constraint. And let's go through an example that shows this. We're going to keep this insert statement for the projects, but first we're going to create a user. Insert into users, values, and then we'll just fill in those columns. The first one, the user ID. We'll go with one, and then we'll give them a username of Caleb Curry. Put a semicolon so we can run both these at the same time. Hover over all of it and run it. And you can see in here, both rows were inserted. So if you wanted, you could go look in the table and see the data. So I already have the users table open. You can click data, and you can see we have user ID of one with the username Caleb Curry but we don't need those for right now, so I'm just gonna drag that back down. Now, let's be mischievous and delete stuff. So to do that, we need to use the delete keyword. So we're gonna try to delete the parent, Caleb Curry. We need to use the from keyword, and then we need to say what table, users. And then we need to use what's known as a where clause to specify which users we want to delete. So we'll say where, and then we'll say, uh, let's go with the user ID equal to one. So that's going to delete the user who has the ID of one. Let's run it. And you can see we get an error. It says attempted to delete a parent key value that has a foreign dependency. So you can see it's not even going to let us delete the content from the table. And that's pretty good by default. But what if you want to configure some stuff? You can actually do that. And to do that, you need to use the on delete keyword when we define our foreign key constraints. So we're done with this insert and delete, so let's just get rid of that. Let's go back to this projects table. And after the foreign key constraint, let's add the keywords on delete. Then you need to say on delete, what do you want it to do? The first option I'm going to explain is set null. Essentially what this is going to do, that row's creator column is going to become null. That might work in some situations, in this situation, it's not going to work super well because we have it labeled as not null. So when would you want to do that? The best time to make it set null is if the long-term survival of projects is important to you. If that user deletes his account, well, the project is still going to exist. It's just going to be creatorless. What is the other option, though? The other option is called cascade. What this is going to do is also delete the child. <laughs> And yes, this can get very dangerous because 10 years from now when you're working with your data, you try to delete something and that delete cascades through your database like a virus, deleting all kinds of stuff. <laughs> so you need to be very, very careful with the on delete cascade. In all honesty, the default is probably the safest route because it's basically going to prevent you from deleting anything 
because everything's connected. But that gets really frustrating because then you always have to find the child of the child of the child and then delete up the tree until you get to the parent. So it can get a little frustrating. In this situation, we're going to go with Cascade because we want it that if the user deletes his account or he gets banned or something stupid, then the project is just deleted. We don't want it to be in existence anymore. Whether you want your app to do that, that's up to you, but that's what we're gonna go with in this situation. So first, let's delete that table. So we'll hover over this and run that. And then finally, let's create that table again. So it's created. Everything seems to be working. And now when you delete the parent, that change will cascade down and delete the project. So hopefully that was useful for you guys. If you guys have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. Uh, I will try to help you out. Or if anyone else knows the answer, I'm sure they'll try to post something. If you like these videos, please be sure to subscribe, click like, and continue watching. Thanks, guys, and I will see you in the next one.